Persona 5 by Atlas. So, uh, Persona 5 pretty much took up my whole month. So if you're wondering why the rest of the games in this video are all really short puzzle games, this is why. Uh, I put about, I put more than 100 hours into this game. I finished it, just played it right through. Uh, it's fantastic. It's probably one of my favorite games now, like ever. For uh, anyone who doesn't know, Persona 5 is a Japanese role-playing game um, in a similar vein to like Final Fantasy or the Tales series or Saga Frontier or anything like that. Um, and I've never bumped into the Persona series. I've been aware of it, but I've never played it. And I've kind of played most JRPG series, so I was interested in getting into this. Uh, and I never played Persona before because the ones that I wanted to play, Persona 3 and Persona 4, are handheld games. And I'm not really a handheld gamer. I just don't have opportunities or the inclination to play in handheld. So I kind of missed them. So this is its first console debut, uh, I think, as far as I'm aware. And it's really, really good. Uh, if you like JRPGs at all, just go play it. You don't even really need, need to listen to the rest of this section. Do watch the rest of the video, though. Um, if you're still here, though, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna point out one thing I really like about it, one thing I really don't like about it. So the thing I really like about it is the combat, and it's because it develops uh, a lot of momentum as you play. So it revolves around exploiting enemy weaknesses much more than any other JRPG I've noticed. In that, hitting an enemy's weakness gives you another move, like it gives you another go. So if you can just keep exploiting weaknesses. It's entirely possible to just win the fight in one round, and that's great. That's like fantastic. And then it has the the opposite effect. That if the enemy exploits your weaknesses, they can really, really turn the tables on you. Like it is a real challenge. It kind of drops off later on in the game, where enemies no longer have weaknesses. Of course not. But then you still have your weaknesses, and there's that bullshit problem of bosses not being weak to anything. It's super annoying, but. For the vast majority of the game, it's really fun. Like, combat is really nice. And since that's what you'll be playing most of your time, spending most of your time doing, you know, they nailed it. Combat is really satisfying. The thing I don't like, uh, and what I was worried about, is the time restrictions. And it just bumps up against my need to see everything. And because it's time-based, any mistake you make, you know, it's going to be very difficult to see everything. That's what your second playthrough is right for, right? So, I will probably be doing that. Little Nightmares from Tarsier Studios. Tarsier Studios are based in Sweden and are best known for making Little Big, Pla Little Big Planet DLC packs and the PS4 port for Tearaway. So this would be their first uh, original IP. So Little Nightmares is a side-scrolling puzzle platformer with horror elements. So if you've played Limbo or if you've played Inside this is more or less the same, even if it's by a different studio. Um, it's quite good though. I've heard it's a bit short. I'm not too far into it. I think I'm beating the first area. Um, most of the puzzles revolve around kind of basic physics. Just drag things into various areas so you can reach higher points or turn off a switch so you can get through a door, things like that. Um, what I really like the most is probably its art design because it's kind of given me a sort of Silent Hill slash uh, Tim Burton stop motion movies like Nightmare Before Christmas or Corpse Bride. That's the kind of vibe I'm getting out of it and I quite like it. Um, I'm also liking the 
lighting that the game has. So your character uh, has a lighter with them um, that you can use to light up areas. Um, and it's quite good because the game is dark, very, very dark in some parts. So the lighting really looks really, really good. Not too far into it yet, so we'll see. I've heard it's short. It's not necessarily a problem for these kind of games. Their l longevity tends to be how difficult their puzzles are. So, if the puzzles aren't particularly difficult, then the game will be very short. And if they're very long, or if they're very difficult, then the game seems like it drags and you just don't want to play it anymore. But so far, it's enjoyable. And I will be trying to play more. Sexy Brutal by Cavalier Game Studios and Tequila Works. Cavalier Game Studios I've never heard of before now, and Tequila Works I think have one other game I vaguely remember, because I don't remember the name of. But oh, we're off to a good start anyway. Um, so the Sexy Brutal is a puzzle game. Uh, the Sexy Brutal itself is a mansion where a party is going on, and the guests at this party are being murdered by the party staff and it is your job to prevent these murders from happening however there are two wrinkles one wrinkle is you only have a day to complete it okay because you're stuck in a time loop so there's a bit of a groundhog day thing going on and the other wrinkle which kind of gets around the just talk to people uh, solution to these situations is you can't be in the same room as the killer or the victim so you have to come up with solutions to stopping murders without interacting with the people involved. So, you know, typical puzzle affair, I suppose. It kind of reminds me a little bit, like, feels like you're playing a board game. Um, but it kind of reminds me of playing Hitman. In that you have to look around your environment, you, you see what all the interactives are, you see where your, your targets, if you like, are you know, what their daily routine is, and you kind of come up with a plan. Only the difference is you're not killing anybody this time, you're trying to stop them from being killed. Uh, it's the same kind of puzzle setup that Hitman is. A Hitman is, in a lot of ways, a puzzle game. And you know, this is kind of the same thing. Um, I do find the puzzles are either really simple or really obscure. So the tutorial puzzle is very basic. But the second puzzle I kind of solved uh, accidentally. Just walking around, checking out the interactives, I just randomly solved the the murder. I, like, I didn't even know what the murder was, and I just randomly solved it. I was like, okay, I hope they're not all like this. Uh, and then the one after it was just very obscure to me. Um, it's kind of based around voodoo magic. And uh, I, I was walking around for quite some time trying to work out the hell I was supposed to do. So either I missed some important piece of information, or it's just not intuitive, I don't know. Um, I stopped there, because I had some other games I wanted to play, but... Like, I like this mechanic, and I like the... I mean, I usually don't like time limits on games, but I do like it here, so hopefully it will improve as we go. Full Throttle Remastered. So Full Throttle uh, is a LucasArts point-and-click game. Came out in 1995, which is more than 20 years ago. Uh, came out between uh, Curse of Monkey Island and The Chuck's Revenge. So if you like the Monkey Island series, and you like Grim Fandango, and you like any other kind of LucasArts uh, adventure games, you're you know you're gonna like Full Throttle. Um, 
I never played Full Throttle, because um, I got into the LucasArts games uh, with the Curse of Monkey Island and then played forward from there and went back to play the rest of the Monkey Island series. We kind of missed Full Throttle and I missed Day of the Tentacle, Maniac Mansion, those kind of things. And they're all getting remasters now, which is great, because I get to play them again. Or rather, not again, for the first time ever. Which is fun. It's kind of weird getting back into the sort of uh, mindset that these puzzle games have. They do kind of have a sort of like Lou Goldberg kind of sense to their puzzles. Like it, it makes sense when you get there at the end and see the solution, but finding out what the solution is is always kind of strange. You know, you're picking up some strange items, you don't really know what they're for and you just kind of mash all the items on different objects in the environment and something works and you're like, oh, okay, that's what I was supposed to do. Uh, I'm, not sure I, I'm not sure I still have the patience for things like that. But one thing I was surprised about, um, Mark Hamill voices the villain in this game, uh, Rip Burger, who's kind of a tycoon guy. Uh, and this game came out in 1995, which would have been right at the end of his run of the Joker uh, on Batman Animated Series. And you can kind of tell, because uh, Rip Burger's voice does have a lot of the Joker in it. And it's not like maniacal, and it's not even as high-pitched, but it's, it's right there. Like, it's a very subdued version of it. But yeah, full throttle. Uh, I've, like, I've been meaning to play it for a long time, so I'm really looking forward to this. I'm not too far into it yet. Uh, again, I'm not sure I have the patience for these kind of puzzles anymore, so I may play it with a walkthrough open beside me, just in case. But yeah, it'll be this, and then it'll be Day of the Tentacle. Remastered, hopefully. Get to play that at some stage. I was kind of um, surprised. Like, some of the puzzle solutions to this game uh, require violence, uh, and it's not something I would have thought of playing all the old LucasArts games, it's not something Guybrush Streetwood would do, so that was a bit of a surprise, but now that I know, I will endeavor to be more violent with my character <laughs> from this point on. And that's your last word? That's it. Well, I'd like to make you just one final offer. <sighs> Prey, uh, the demo. So the Prey actually comes out next month. Um, so there'll be more of it in the next one's video. I just wanted to show just a little bit of the demo, uh, so this video isn't just all puzzle games. Um, so Prey is made by Arcane Studios, and Arcane Studios make Dishonored, so you already know this game's going to be very good. It's just a question really of how good. So the big uh, selling point, I suppose, for this game are its enemies. So the enemies are mimics, and as the name might suggest, they can take on the forms of everyday objects that you will encounter in random rooms in the, in the you know, science environment where things go wrong, as, as these things do. Um, so the mimics can just become anything. You'll walk into the room and you'll just be like, okay, how many enemies are in the room right now? Uh, and then you just start randomly bashing things and hoping none of them jump out to kill you. Or kind of hoping they do jump out to kill you. Don't want to turn your back in there like, haha, I was a mimic all along. It's getting very strong uh, Bioshock system shock vibes. Um, and I'm also getting a bit of Deus Ex from it. Um, in that there's a lot of hacking and there's a lot of uh, just play the game the way you want to play it, kind of. So more next month. I'm thinking this game is going to be pretty, pretty good. And hopefully I'm not wrong. Because I could do it some more Dishonored Deus Ex Bioshock. So those were some of the games I played 
this month, April 2017. Uh, a lot of Persona and a small bit of puzzle and head scratching. And then a bit of alien stomping and getting stomped on. Yeah. So next month will be Prey, properly since it's releases then. Uh, and there will be another game called Rhyme, made by Tequila Works. So Sexy Brutal, same developer. Different game though, it looks a bit... Uh, it looks kind of like Wind Waker, only I doubt it's going to be as long as a big Legend of Zelda game. I'm sure it's a very small kind of indie game. But it looks really nice, I really like the art style, so I'm hoping that will be good. Other than that, I may add some um, spoiler sections for some of the games we played this month, because I didn't actually finish any of those puzzle games. Uh, I'm particularly looking at Little Nightmares and Sexy Brutal. So I'm kind of hoping they'll be good. So, maybe sections for that. Otherwise, like, subscribe, share, all that jazz, leave comments. Okay, thanks for watching. See you next month.